This episode of The Cut was filmed at the Men's Grooming Lounge. You have a very successful show. Yeah. You, you have a family. Yeah. You are um, a recording artist, sir, and you're balancing all of that. Yeah. So maybe you need to tell us about how you do it. <laughs> well, you know, because we, 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 it's really showcasing you guys. I don't really like for, to take too much of this platform. You know, them know if I find me from meeting the on YouTube. <laughs> and <laughs> there's nothing, there's no detail. There's no detail of the life that, you know, yeah. Secretary of Self, so, say, 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 know somebody where, where yeah. I pressure him into it. <laughs> Into March, can I remember say cranium, cranium, it's a cranium, cranium, me, 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 me take you up on a, on, on a thing, you know. Yeah. You need to sing a song to represent for the husband, them. for the whole of your career, you represent for the side man and the bonner man. Yeah. The husband, them need some anthem to bread you. <laughs> no, do me that. Remember, say, we say, you know, one burner, you know, no, do that. <laughs> opportunity now I'm where I want to be we are here in the cut with international recording artist yeah. cranium yeah. yeah and the on-stage boss himself Winford Williams and yes, you know I'm going to start I'm going to start by, by, by reasoning with, with Winford because when we know Winford when we see Winford Winford delve into everybody's story but we don't really know Winford's story. You know what I'm saying? Because you are always the one asking the questions. Nobody not really ask you much questions or give you even a chance to tell your side of the story. Mm -hmm. So you were born and raised where in Jamaica. And give me some backstory to your upbringing, childhood. First of all, let me declare that I don't know how to answer questions. I only know how to ask them. <laughs> Okay, well, so try today. forgive me, Virgil, if I can't answer. Yeah. <laughs> but I was born in St. Andrew, rural St. Andrew, okay. in the Lawrence Tavern area. Went to Oberlin High School. So what kind of a, 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 a kid were you? Were you the type of kid who was always asking questions and the big people? And I said, my youth, I ask so much questions, you're a little boy. I, I, I suppose I was, so much. I was curious. Mm. I wanted to know. I wanted to know if things work. I, I was a passionate lover of music. Mm. That's why I... I mean, chatting about music um, was something. It was natural for me to have a show that's about music. The foundation of my my um, of on stage is really about music. Right. It's a passion that I carried through my entire life. Okay. Absolutely no resistance to music. Um, from my from from as far as I can remember, um, dancing, even playing sound systems. Um, you know. It, Everything to do with music that I could do. Okay. So he's it, a man who used to love party and... Yeah, I yeah, do wherever the music is playing. I, as a kid in, up there in St. Andrew, I'd be where the sound system is. Mm -hmm. I string up the sound about the shop and so. Yeah. I, I had to be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, hanging out and dancing and so on. I mean, I, I, mean, I would break any rule <laughs> just to be there. Mm. My mother used to beat me up for that a That's lot. True. So you have brothers and sisters and stuff too? Yes. I, well, I, yeah. We are, it's a big family of ten. Ten of us, my mom. Okay. My father died before I was old enough to know him. Mm. So I was fatherless for most of my, my youth. Yeah. Uh, for, for, I mean, growing up until my a stepfather stepped in at about age 14 or thereabouts um, and became man yard. You know what okay. I mean? But prior to that, I was just a, a kid who had no father. Father was, I was like one when he died. Mm. Um, and he was breadwinner and everything for us. Very really? like progressive guy. Yeah. And my mom, my mom was only 20, just 20 years old, with three of us. And he was? And he was the man. Well, how old was he? He was 27. 27, young man, wow. So that must have so been a I big don't know. Blow. I don't know him. And so I grew up like that. Not even that, I couldn't even find somebody else mm -hmm. in my community who could, who I could, I was who, who was experiencing the same thing. Like their, their parents 
They, they, if, they, if their parents are upset, were upset, they, it's because they're overseas in England in particular or somewhere else, mm. but not because they're dead. Right, right, right. So there was no coming home for my father. Whoa. You know and I mean, for all, for, throughout my life. And that, that is, that was hard to deal with. Well, I mean, I must say that you don't strike me or the public as somebody who was missing a, a father influence in your life. I mean, just, just how you carry yourself, how you, your thought process works and stuff. I mean, I, you, you are to be given a lot of credit for the man who you've become being um, without a father for, for all of your life, you know. So that's incredible. Um, so, so Cranium now, you have done what people said impossible, yeah. which is busing in Jamaica without actually living in Jamaica. Yeah. It was, it's almost important. We know the baddest artists, them, they are foreign all yeah. over the United States, all over Europe. Sure. But it's like the toughest thing for them get the break in Jamaica. How, what did you do different, you think, that, that made it possible for you to get that break there from New York to Jamaica? I feel like for me, my story is very unique because um, I've always been a childhood star in high school. Meaning, mm -hmm. so I started the whole movement from high school. So if, if you're in a Queens, Bronx, Brooklyn, and you go to high school, you know who Cranium was. Oh, you know what okay. I mean? Because I always had like a one song in the community, but it just never, uh, it never come out of the, um, mm. the, 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 the boroughs. The boroughs. And then eventually I feel like I just put my mindset say I find me there. You know what I mean? Mm. And me know wear clocks and my, my pants are too tight and uh, me never try say me are wear John's book bag. You know, me know about North Face book bag, me know about big pants, me know about regular clothes like at school. Yeah. So me never act like I feel like most of the artists in the United States when me always come across and give them advice is like, brother, when they are fine, you know, stop portray something where only you know, there amongst every day else. And I go lose the people, them not believable. So when me company scene, I was very believable because me that be me, I was being a New York kid. Me never yeah. try to be something else. Everybody who left from Jamaica for America have one dream and just to get a bite off of the apple as I said, the big apple in New York City. Mm -hmm. So me just want to represent as a youth who get the opportunity from Jamaica for America to be a better, you know what I mean, person and make more money or whatever the case may be, as your grandmother or your mother would have said, you come a foreign for her. We don't know corn cowboy for drink the milk or whatever the case right, is. So yeah. me just didn't want to represent being a youth from the state that be authentic to what me learn in a fine and just build and I feel like that's what make it work. So it just happened natural. Natural. Yeah. The big song was nobody now for know. Yeah, that was a big song where really showed showed me. Before that it was a song called This Morning that nobody outside no really know unless he's a cranium fan. Mm. But that's the song where really start the bus with me, where people start saying that you are bad. Yeah. And then we just never drop the catch from this, so I'm just, you know, continue the move. You, you are originally from Mobe, correct? correct? Yeah. So you went to school up to what point in Jamaica? I left, I um, think, at first, um, nine grade. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you're there, Jamaica, you basically, yeah. the foundation was set 100%, in Jamaica. 100%, 1,000 percent. And you, what, what about the family structure? Mother, so, father? Yeah, so my father is from CV Garden, phase okay. two. And my mother is from um, Mobi. I don't know they meet. I never really ask. That's the weirdest thing out of a 3 million man in a Jamaica, a 2.5 million yeah. find a man from CV Yeah. And you know, so the family, when I moved to the state, it was just me and my mother and my father basically. So well, and then, not, so then I see if you blood run through your, yeah, your veins, bro. Yeah, see if you come from where well, I'm from. You know, father, see if you not normal when it comes to um production of talent yeah i don't know if you would have do you don't know that there is something will stand out to you i know that stand out to me so well, perhaps when we did talk to you first we did that part didn't come up did yeah it? i'm but, not so sure maybe it did and i don't remember yeah maybe. but yes normally you would think about the others who came from their way yo the amount of artists will come from yeah, see view you see like what trench Town is to reggae music True. see view is to dance hall music yeah. Even um, Dexter Daps and yeah. even the new generation now. Because right now, me that say Dexter Daps have the flame in a sense for say the the new movement of the music, and he is just exceptional talent. And yeah. the, the, the people yeah, them he, flock to him show, and 
in, 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 in have a sound, in have an image, everything I work, yeah. right? Yeah, and him have a good working relationship. Yeah, too. man, it looks so good. Man. Yeah, when it, as it relates to voice, but when you go across, you have to go across Spanish Town Road now and go over to Waterhouse mm -hmm. for, for for King Jammies. Oh and, gosh, and, well you know that at my academy. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and and so and then you go over the so, over Jews Land this and find Jack Scott. Yeah, Scott, so, yeah. yeah. So King. dance all, dance all. In the in the in the uh, over on that side, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. West Kingston is where reggae roots reggae was found. Because yeah. that's where my grandfather's from. The, right. My grandfather's original from Waterhouse. Scrooge, no. So 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 your far your grandfather is a so Waterhouse. So my father my father's father is from Waterhouse, yeah. and I guess he meet my grandmother in Seaview Yard. So, so which side Seaview. of the family? Because Scro Scrooge Scrooge is from my mother's side now. Is your mother's okay. side? Mother's side, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so, so and people... everybody from that side they can see. Every single one. <laughs> every auntie. Really? So every auntie and uncle. Because even Neville Lindo, yeah. um, as a singer, I have Wayne Scotch from Moby, and then I have um, Scrooge Drive as the one who actually get the, the, the big break. The break. Yeah, man. But the whole family, as, I tell you this, me can enter a family competition as singers, and I guarantee we not lose. Me, like, me, me have so much faith in them, okay. every single one. So it wasn't, when you discovered your singing voice, it wasn't something that I just, by, cha by buck ups, you no. didn't know said this a run. In, in the blood, yeah. In the blood. We didn't know it's a run in the blood. I when I moved to, to the States, I ended up living with screwdriver at one point. So I'm there only, man. Me used to DJ. For some weird reason, I don't want DJ. I don't know why I don't want DJ, but I don't want DJ. And I remember I was DJing some song, and the man I said, No, you can't sing, you know. Yeah. And then he just started uh, teaching me everything. Okay, yeah, so screwdriver like, sing, Sharon are pregnant, yeah. you're pregnant, so no. people might hear where I talk about screwdriver and I know big artists from in the 80s come right up. Yeah, man. Yeah, so, so he would have had a, a, a profound impact on your musical career. 100%. I'm going to give him that 100%. Because as I said, he's a man where see me and sing and say you're bad, you know what I mean? And I didn't know I want to be singing a sick. I remember the first time I sing in a church and I saw a woman rap. I said, this is a girl work for me in her life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but your content moved far from <laughs> yeah. the gospel content over the years. <laughs> yeah, far, far. She ran up pregnant to pregnant to mama. She ran up pregnant to pregnant to mama. They know you look so sick, you think you don't know mama. You have no lovers babble. What I noticed about your career is that you don't drop a whole heap of song. No. You, you have always been an artist that you drop song with count. Yes. Like you sang them when them drop them, them, them sound good, mix good. Were you always aiming to be a, a quality over quantity type of artist from, from the get go? From out the gate. That's why when me bust, there was, I never had no problem. Fair try, have no um, control with other people because nobody else had created them vocals. So mm -hmm. my boss, me never, you know, when a man just boss, I have six man, we have six different yeah, songs yeah, for yeah. Same, you know yeah, that go already. Yeah. Yeah. So when me boss, me never have that because out the gate, me just always have quality control. And I always realize, uh, and, and, and me just broke bad because when nobody has to know come out, when me see a check from nobody has to know compared to the other song with boss, like, in a Jamaica, if, if a regular man see me on the street and him say, me rate me as an artist, the first thing I go say, yo, buy what you want to buy is a big song, like Lifestyle. I'm mm -hmm. say, yo, my favorite cream of this. Yeah. But I see the difference between that check there and nobody that's no check. Right. So my brain automatically say, hey, me need to make proper songs. We yeah. take proper time. And not saying Lifestyle wasn't a bad song. I just felt like it was one of them dash out there. Yeah. Actually, I did that song because I did that song for my father. I wrote that record for my father, actually. Yeah? Yeah, buy what you want, buy fly what you want. That was a mother record that I wrote. Okay. And it happened that at the time my link was um, Julian. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody go out with Julian and my father, but we couldn't get the song to get through. I went, my manager hear the song and I said, yo, keep it. I would just release it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the song just. Because them times I said, I want it wonder too. I remember I, said, I went to the phase of being a want it wonder. <laughs> because nobody, <laughs> nobody now to know it was such a big smash. Oh, gosh, <laughs> it was such a big tune. I, I mean, today that must still be like. The, the numbers wise, Panalia, YouTube and all of that. It's, yeah, it's funny. It's, so it's weird. I must, yeah, man, I must share vibes. So, what I've realized over time as I start get into the business more and more understanding is like there are certain markets that certain songs are bigger. And then I realize how oh, broad music is. So, you, nobody else knows the song that launched me and gave me like the big look for, for exposure. But when we go to Africa, it's like, can't believe it's the biggest record. Right. And if I go to Israel, you know, it's a sit-down the biggest song. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. in the core, nobody has a big song, but you're not getting a foul like Girl Policy. You're not getting a foul like Buy Where You Want Buy. Yeah. Then in Canada, Weekend is like the biggest cranium song. Like, after switch songs, we use to close each shows in different markets. 
Right. So, um, yeah, it's it weird, man. But nobody has known the song will launch me to the world and put me in the rooms and I understand the game. Yeah. But yeah, man, one it wonder, man, them, them used to beat me, man. Yeah. Beat me like nothing, man. But, but, <laughs> but back in, 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 your, in your early years in the music, who were you? Who were you playing to? Who were you thinking about in your, in your, in your lyrics? Who did you see in your mind's eye when you write? Were they a Jamaica? I mean, you're in a, a community of many nationalities. Yes. And who were, did you pick out any particular group and say them, Jamaicans, the, the, the Caribbean, what? How did you, mm. who, who were you harboring in your mind when you write? You know what it is? I feel like I realized that um, most, uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. Everything as, as an artist, you, you learn as you grow. Mm. And it's, it's sad that some of us not get free, actually. Gather with self before it's too late. You know, like me tell somebody all the time, say, like some man say, I say, yo, them artists are them hype. And I say, you have to get artists two years to come back down to earth. Because none of we don't know what it feel like for just boss yeah. and human has scream. Because I see human boss elephant man cute before. I see that with money. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, music is that thing where it, 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 it create this thing where it's a myth around here, a little thing where you just create yeah. this whole thing. Yeah. So with that question being answered, I would say that definitely I realized the power of dance and music and how far it spread. And I felt like I had to slow it down. So I wasn't necessarily saying, yo, it's a, a specific group of people. Okay. I just know, say, Whatever Sean Paul and I do, I say that the guy in his market, the Trini market, I just want it to be okay. yeah. in the market, and I knew that it would take like clarity, hundred yeah. percent. You say clarity, yeah. but I see something by your chain. Yeah, but say melody. Yeah, man, a melody. Which and, and that, for me, yeah. has always been the main factor in the crossover records yeah. over the years. Whether it be dancehall, whether it be Afrobeat. The melody sweet like sugar. No sure. care you sing in voice. No care it, it's really just the, the, the tones yeah, and the melodies that you bring that you make the song the hit. Hundred percent. And right now, and there's this old debate, Afrobeats versus dancehall, and yeah. I feel like <laughs> we get compared yeah. a lot, right? Yeah. Um, do you see it as dancehall fighting for space? against Afrobeat in, uh, and commercial radio and all of these things? I think, I think it's a myth in the sense of like, you can't compare. It's like there's no comparison because from, from, from my understanding, of, and I'm speaking, when I speak, I speak from what my experience. Yeah. When I talk about next my experience, and what experience with everything different. Because we don't know it all, we just know it enough, right? Yeah. As for what worked for me, what I would say is that Afrobeat, He's creating their golden era. Right. Meaning is they're stamping for them feet in everything. Just like early on when dance hall was fresh on the scene. Right. I could have called at least nine to ten artists when me I got high school who legitly had a song but I play upon Hot 97. And the Power No Fives and you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, I mean yeah, them yeah. And now I feel like they're having their moment and it's very new and fresh to the people them. And it's so crazy because I have friends who would never know the difference between Afrobeat and dance at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because once an accent that is not Spanish that I've been speaking on the record, yeah. they would think it's dance hall. Yeah. We don't know and says a different thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, say it's an Afrobeat. And then um, the game has changed and I want people to understand this. When it comes on to getting on the radio, it's not like you just vice a song and you go on the radio. Yeah. What most artists fail to understand is that we are moving to a time called error. I mean, called numbers error. Mm -hmm. So when an artist bust back then and a DJ in the States hear it in New York, he must he just go off of the vibe when he gets in a club and he hear the song play and yeah. see the reaction. Yeah. Now it's different. Now a man got asked how much she meet have water up on Shizam, water up on oh. Spotify, Apple Music. So no, no, because you sang big, you feel said go up on radio. So if that was the case, everybody up on radio. So okay. now it's like people fear for understand say, if Korean have the big song and say this is the big song, and Wayne Marshall have a big song, you're sending the song to the radio station. 90% mm. of the time, they go up on the number is bigger. And if you think about how much people in Africa, we stream for them artists. Right. It's a whole different thing. Jamaica just get Spotify like what, two years now, two and a half years, three years now? Yeah. So yeah. the number gave me a big difference. And then when the song them drop, 
who are bring the song them to work the records. Most artists not work the song. Mm. The song boss and must move away from it. You know what I mean? Me, me I work a song, a song, I create me tell me work my thing. I create them song drop. And it take time dead in the corner. And it de -de 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 -de. It a move. Then it stop, then it stop move. Once me see when the numbers them look, when me can't hold my chest now I go and say, yo look, we have ten thousand stream mm -hmm. or ten thousand shizam or we have mm -hmm. two million plus Spotify. This record have a chance, it's moving. Then you go make sure. And they never for real estate. You know what I mean? But you, some artists don't do that. You know a lot about the, the circuit and the system, how to get the record from A to B to C. Will would you be the same artist without signing or is signing a record deal, a big record company deal, overrated? Um uh, the truth is I would not take away credit from a label because I would I, I would be um where the word ungrateful. What I will say is, no label move until a record is moving. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, a label is just there for back you up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you get the record off of the ground, they have thousands of artists too. Just right. like me tell a man, someone say, you do collaboration, that's what the song work. I say, but you know how much man do collaboration when even pass? Exactly. It no work, so it no yeah. matter who you is. If that was the case, everybody would be number one. It's just that a man have to work. Me know me, I do. When me drop a song, as I said, I wrote the song. The right. phone flex them there, me I find them. Yeah. Enough artists get the big song, and the man them come to New York, or them come to Atlanta, and them in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. Them no one go, go mix shoulders, them no one rub shoulders, you know what I mean? Yeah. So as I said, like there's a lot of hit songs that come out of Jamaica on a daily basis. It's just that the man them don't take it further than wait there. You know right. what I mean? And that's just the truth. That's where the numbers game matters. Yes. Um, because it is really about numbers. What they're doing is crunching numbers. Yes. A record label now is just a big marketing entity. Mm. It's all about analytics. It's about who you are and why you like a, a record. That's what they research every day. Yeah. And they, they hire marketing and scientists, really. Yeah. Social scientists to understand why you like something and why you, you don't. It's true. And what they do is to crunch those numbers and to look at the Jamaica as, as, a, as, a, as, as, a, as a, like an incubator of music creation and, mm -hmm. and vibes and contributor to pop culture globally. They're always studying us without us knowing what, what might happen because they already know what, how, they, they know more about their consumers globally yeah. than, than the artist sure. and the artist management and the producers. They are doing scientific studies and always crunching the numbers to see why and how people react to, pop, to music and to things put, put out there in the pop culture. Sure. That is where their, their focus is. So when they look at you and see you have a, a little buzz in a, in, in a Jamaica or some little place, they are going to have to project where it's going. They, they need to know how far it can get before yeah. they put money on it. Sure. And for you to get on their network of, of platforms, you know what I mean, in terms of media and, and distributors, you will have to show signs that you are capable of reaching and, yeah. and connecting with the behavior in their, in their markets. Because what they're doing is consumer studies all the while, no right. different from, from cars and phones and, yeah. and all these products. Yeah. It, it, these are the same level of marketing that is behind record labels. So they're not about music and newness and, and like trends and so on. They're about consumer understanding why people like something. And I and feel like there's one them. big mistake where we make all the time. Like the hugest, biggest mistake where most of us, because I put myself in there because we're a dancer artist, where we make. Mm. You see the, the, the $5,000 difference goes further than with some man think. So you have man where hot. Have the, have the movement. But when them come from Jamaica, they come to a show in the state, they go in a banquet hall. And they don't understand how that affects them. Yeah. Because you have people who legitly don't realize that this artist is selling 2,000 tickets. They don't know. So when the festivals come around with you, represent yourself, I represent the culture and these festivals, how can you convince somebody that you're pulling out 2,000 people when they don't know about it? Because a venue that nobody knows. Mm -hmm. You can't invite billboard, you can't invite right. um say so for example on stage, you can't there's certain environment where some people just 
Once them tie between us, they say, you know, I'm bang with all, you know what I mean? They're not coming, yeah. you know what I mean? They don't have time mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like most of the artists they need to understand, so when you come in a certain market, you have to do proper venues that are actually in the system where there is Live Nation or MMG, whoever yeah. it is that are collecting this data. They say, mm -hmm. when we are picture artists and say, yo, who are in Cranium? And they say, yo, this guy is selling 750 tickets on a Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is good. We can put him on a weekend show, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Enough. Artists do that type of show because a man like Kana, half of him, an extra five brand, more than when we're getting there, so he not understand, say, yeah. this is very important to make sure you say, and managers have to understand to, that too. So, you know, take an artist and you yeah, put him in a state or whatever, make sure you put him in a proper venue. And if you don't want to balance out anything, because we're not run from the culture, keep an after party in a wish party. But that is what the record label is, uh, that's what show. they have over, over, that's over, all. over us, that's over all you about. guys. They, they, what they're doing is to say, I dare you to get into those venues That's all that is now on your CV. Yeah. Okay, your, so. your, your, the venues you play yeah. and the kind of numbers you're drawing are going to determine how you go forward. It's true. How much they will put behind you. Yeah. And uh, so, so sometimes, and if you look at Shaggy's, Shaggy's walk yeah. Yeah. To, 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 plat, to, to, to Diamond, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you will see that Shaggy took those risks yeah. early out. 100%. For nothing, he will take a, a big TV morning show and get up early and get on that show mm -hmm. yeah. over thousands of euros and then someday and go and, and take the, the, TV, um, the TV show mm -hmm. where he can perform and talk about himself and connect with people. And a, a label sees this and, it's, and the label see how people respond. How I many people are responding to Shaggy's interview yeah. and his performance? And they are ready to, to, to jump out early and competing among one another, actually. One to push Shaggy, Shaggy forward and to push him into markets where they know, oh, this guy could fit that demographic over 100%. there. This guy could fit over here. Mm -hmm. Let's put money on him. Sure. So our guys must understand. Even and we touring. were talking about Africa earlier, um, Wayne. Mm -hmm. Africa is where our numbers are. Yeah. I've always been. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. they, they, they automatically love what you do in Jamaica. Whether it's reggae, from reggae days to dance hall. Yeah. There are many stories of all kinds of Arab stories coming out of Africa when, when man boss, when Jamaican reggae started to run away. Yeah. And they had issues because Africa knew nothing about promoting concerts <laughs> and hosting artists and all of that. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole of skills it takes to do that. And they, artists were going down there to Africa and, 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 and can't even come back. So people, all of the big artists will tell the stories that, that he would oh, believe up on. Well. And they, yeah. and they yeah. stayed yeah. away yeah. from it. They stayed away yeah. from it. But all of that has changed. Yeah. What I'm saying is Africa is, has developed. And there are Africans now who, you, who, can, who are doing the right thing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Afrobeat is said to be more professional business-wise in mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. um, the Afrobeat um, music and their management and everything, far more artists included more professional than, than dance art. You see, Cranium now, may I have to give you credit because even the first time when me get introduced to Wizkid, mm -hmm. now was you were collaborating with him that, that's like over 10, that's before the Afrobeat explosion. For, and it's and it crazy because, as I said, I was going through Africa and I will never forget the day I made Amsterdam. Me and the tickers. You sure you want to say that? Who do do? And no, she, that, that, that passed, that passed. <laughs> we're there, we're there. We're there. And we're there, we're there, and um, she was from Tanzania, never forget, she's Tanzanian. And she said to me, she said, um, do you listen to um, Whiskey? And I was like, yeah, it's crazy. I, come, I, I, I came across him through a Chris Brown um, feature. And she said, yo, he's really good. And I said, I got you with my manager, I got you. And it's crazy. Crazy enough, my manager is Ghanaian. He's from Ghana. Mm. So, quick, like, just, I'm there and I'm like, yo, them boy are coming. Mm -hmm. Them are forward. Because at the time I was going through Europe and normally 2013, 14, I mean 14, 15, 16, normally they plan to tour. You will see next week the artist will come, next week the artist But then I start to stone boy, and I mm -hmm. see all of me there, mm -hmm. and I see whiskey, and I say, hey, eh, you are going now, Papa D. Yeah. Yeah, go over yes and no, you know. So that's why I came up with Can't Believe. I showed to, to ZJ Liquid him, sent me the beat and yeah. the mash it up. And oh, nobody believed in the record. When I dropped that song, I could tell you that is one of the one song I could openly say 
nobody understood it. It was one of the hardest records to work. Mm -hmm. Because my job it was like, wait, my mommy I left from nobody I feel no good, good, nobody I feel no wanna come talk about we can if you feel like you want to. Yeah. And big up the tickers, cause yeah. Yeah, we know it's <laughs> impossible. <laughs> We can't then at the barbershop and we not talk about on stage. Yeah. The impact that, that on stage has had over the years mm -hmm. culturally and the, 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 the music. Um, how many years has on stage been running? No. About twenty five years. I need to just I need to check um twenty five years yeah. that around are quarter somewhere century. around there. Yeah. Twenty five years. Um, no, that's serious, you know. And mm -hmm. you've basically been doing every Saturday. Do you take breaks? No, no season breaks. It's every Saturday. Um, because it's it's about current affairs, entertainment and um and news. Entertainment. So that, it's, but, a, but, but, it's a it's a news and entertainment current affairs show. So when things happen, we can't say why we don't have a break when big stories are breaking. Exactly. We 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 have to be out there, um, bringing more to the public and hearing from the newsmakers and the, the, the people involved in these stories. Yeah. And for clarity, for for more information that people are always asking about and. And so there's, there's, I wish I could take some break. <laughs> really. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah man, of course. Mm. What would be your most memorable mm. moment, pan answers like? What, what would be wow. like that one shaka? At least one. That's a good what, I can give you a, a very early one. Er, maybe the earliest. Actually, it's the first big one on one I've done with the Godfather, Alton Ellis. Okay. Mm. Yeah? And that interview was my very first interview, one on one now. We were, we were doing stuff before, okay. but not a one-on-one. -on -one. We were doing bios okay. and play some of their music. Okay. But that, when we started, when I started to do one-on-one -on -one interview now with, with artists, he was a, a full hour, Alton Ellis. Okay. And he went into telling us about some big, you think I love you? Yeah. Them big okay. tune, eh? Yeah. break them down for us. Oh, wow. And one of them in particular, you think I love you and so on, for just one thing and so on. He was talking about a woman. He's got a girl in the inner city who was the prettiest girl around. And, uh, and they, they were fighting all the time. Okay. He revealed all of this, you know. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and in fact, when, he, when they have a fight, Sir Cox and Dad, Dad producer Cox and Dad, yes. was very happy because a big tuna come. <laughs> right. So every time they fight, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a song came. Yeah. After they come with a tune. Yeah. The, it, it was a big thing for mm. him. Mm. You know what I mean? So much so that it, he said to me then, that wh where's she now? When I asked him about her, she, he said, well, she's, she's, in, she's in the UK. Okay. And he lived in the UK that time. Okay. Too. Mm. Yeah. And he said, if I'm in London and she's... She comes to London and going somewhere else. So much uh, Pusan oh, dog, even yeah, now, even up to that time of the interview. <laughs> oh, wow. The, I mean, it was a lot of. All right. So the Godfather attacks you. You give her a reggae icon, you have to go yeah. give her a dancer, no personality that you consider oh, to be a, the oh, biggest yeah. personality. <laughs> or maybe just an interview that you will never forget. Or sometime you just a look through on social media and you see people reference it years <laughs> later. Right. Easily, hands down, the one teeth gang, gargan. Yeah. Okay. So the gold teeth. The gold teeth. Yeah, front teeth. Not the gold teeth. Front teeth. Sorry, sorry. Not the one teeth. The gold teeth. The gold teeth. Dance or gargan. Ninja man. Wow. You ever see them man in an interview? I'm not, I'm not the funniest Again, he was the first. He was our first dance holder. Because when we started on stage, we wanted to treat the, all the, the foundation era. Right. These people are unknown in terms of television. Yes. They did a lot of work with putting them on TV, performing at shows that I captured. And then I started interviewing all of them. And I pay homage to the, the, the foundation era mm -hmm. of the music. I wanted to know more about them because right. I was fascinated with their stories. Right. Stories like that, I just told about the yeah, yeah, yeah. And how they were hungry many most of the time when they were doing a song no song we were embracing or the man hungry and you know, look some feet right. so cox himself told me this okay before he died and he said um 
when a man hungry down a trench town or so, then just walk up a street and Rita has it in her book. She and Bobby used to go to, to, to Sir Cox and Dad when and he to eat. Mm -hmm. And Sir Cox would record people because they are hanging out because there's always a big pot on fire for mm -hmm. any man who come through can eat some food. You know? That's how hungry people were. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these artists would go there and, and record. See? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, and those stories were yes, very yes, fascinating, yes. fascinating to me. And I wanted to share them with people. That's why I started doing interviews and wanting to dig into their stories. Understood. You know what I mean? Hunger and, 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 and poverty was a big part of this music. Yeah. And I remember talking to Soja and asked him, what is their lore? You white people, because we in Jamaica, people are concerned that you're taking away the music. Yeah. So you yeah, know, the same soldier mm -hmm. won Grammy, oh, Grammy yeah. MC, the, the lead singer. And he said to me, the, the allure, when we look at where you're coming from, when we read the stories of reggae, and who are we not to love it? Sure. Who are we, the love that you're spitting, and looking back and knowing where you came from, your slave experience, your, your, how you're even living right now and how much struggle you have in Jamaica. And the music of the first 20 years of, of reggae yeah. speaks so much of humanity, of love, of, of these things. Why are we not to love it? I the feel as far as reggae is concerned, like reggae, for me, just, 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 this is just my opinion. Um, I feel like me listening to reggae, because reggae, between dancer and reggae, reggae music gives me a feel of hope. It gives me a feel of um, guidance. Um, mm -hmm. I understand a whole culture through listening to reggae music, right? Mm -hmm. So, me never grow a laxet, for example. Uh, me not me no follow the most, um, what I say, diet, vegan diet, right? Mm -hmm. But me learn about it through reggae music. Mm -hmm. And I feel like now is like, whether the, like the reggae artist and that's doing reggae, like the younger, like would I be our oh, younger youth them? It's just that I feel like they have to be more like, me have, have to believe you, like, if that makes sense. Like, mm. the reggae artists, oh, I sing reggae, no, I feel like make me believe you. Because reggae can't dead. It's impossible for dead. Mm -hmm. I don't think that could ever, ever happen. No. It's just that I feel like anybody who come to the game now, I feel like, give me that realness. They're like, me, not, me, not, have, me have to feel you to the, to the bone. Like, you need, mm -hmm. when I say something like, when, when my sisters like them, it's like, yeah. It really like the, the spirit of my name, you know what I mean? The, 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 the whole structure, the whole vibrant, the interviews, the way them speak, the way they bring themselves is more of like this. I really you know, so mm -hmm. now I feel like that's all I needed. I just feel like we need some young youth to just make me believe, say, yo, we yeah. really are singing this. I'm leaving. yeah, but we must yeah, pay yeah, attention you know? to the change that is happening now, and, do, and we can't this, we can't dismiss it as nothing or it's not good. And a com the comparison, I think it's fair. good. I, yes, I, I don't think real. the comparison is fair. I think we should give them a chance to be, to, 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 to hone their skills and to express themselves, because that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Self-expression. Yeah. And again, they're in a city youths who are hungry and trying to find a way out. And so I think we should allow them. Because remember, it was reggae first mm -hmm. that break internationally. 100%. And then came dance on, which yeah. everybody <laughs> dismissed and said, no good. It got the same fight that the mutual I get now. Sure. Some people are, are debating about that, but I would like to, for them to show me the evidence uh, uh, for what they see. The, the reggae dance all got the same the same issue, you know, yeah. with, from the society who were saying them killing the music and what have you, and dance all became now the new thing and run away, and mm. and it didn't kill reggae. No, the the two coexisted, mm. and and now we're seeing these kids emerging with a beat that people, it's it really problematic because indeed people feel like the beat itself is reminding them of hip hop. Yeah. And they don't want Jamaica's music to be sounding like any other. Yeah. They want Jamaica's music to be that Jamaica uniqueness, that Jamaican energy there, that Jamaican feel and, and, and think the way, what reggae do to people in us to remind them of humanity. Yeah. And that's why after the pandemic, when I go to like jam rock cruise, the appreciation level gone through the roof, Bedring. It's yeah. like they must say, where was uh, we missed this yeah. on the ship? Mm -hmm. the, the people, the appreciation for the music went through the roof. All right, so gentlemen, you 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 both been in the game for for years now, and 
you know what I know you know whenever you do something for a, for a long period of time there's not always it's not always going to be great years or great times there there must be times in life where um, it was tough you know just mm -hmm. like myself I have so many times where I had to show up like everything was all good yeah but in it, it, in reality a whole heap of turmoil are going behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of men wear a mask that everything is all good. Yeah. How, how do you guys manage to, or, or what, 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 were there any times where you had to show up when back against the wall and tough times? You didn't want to, oh yeah. Yes. Absolutely. For me, 20, 20, end of 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. I never ever knew that's a soup tastes good. Mm -hmm. So I'm out. Yo. Yeah, because when, when the pandemic happened, I had a whole album that was finished. Mm. You have Burner Boy, you have Whis um, Tyler. I had a whole album, a like Midnight Spark album. And when the world shut down in March, the album was supposed to come out in April, I think, or uh, something like that. Whoa. We ended up drop the album. We planned it to drop the album the, in 2020. Mm. But for some weird reason, we end up drop the album in December because now I go up on tour for tour the album. Right. And then the pandemic happened. Mm -hmm. And when the pandemic happened now, and then I have to send my deposit. I don't spend the money already. You know, you know what I mean? Yo. We don't get all of the deposits already. I mean, I say, all right, cool. Yo. I finish up more. What's my deal? Yeah, that is. Oh, man. I had to send back. I never forget the day I get a call and say, yo, um, we're going on lockdown. I said, lockdown. Yeah, I'm drink tea, soup, bitters. I do everything. And I was like, what am I going to do? But it's so crazy that I end up having one of the biggest songs in the dance hall in 2020. That's what yeah. we Because that's when Girl Policy came out. Girl Policy take with through the pandemic. The whole pandemic. And uh, I turned comedian by internet. I don't know if you do. Yo, you yeah. run the place. Yo, yeah. the man <laughs> turned big influence around the place. One yeah, time, I see the man a cook. I forgot the way he did a cook and a beer joke. I mean, I saw so cream on me still a long time. Yeah, but it was stressing. It was yeah. a very... That, to me, in music, that was my stressful time. That time when Nobody Snow first came out. Because I feel like we didn't get that first big song. Mm -hmm. And then, like... You know, me coming at the game single, well, single-ish to an extent. And then, um, you know what I mean? I said, like, the song became big and we have be a girl and be a thing. And then the song started fade, everything. The ticker just started to take time, Yo, take it themselves. It's stressful. Mm -hmm. But it was really stressful, man. Like, I feel like I went through depression. I definitely, 100%, I never know what depression was until um, nobody else became big. And definitely when the pandemic came, that was my wow. most stressful time of my life. I know what I experienced. And nobody did know. No, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man, sir. Nobody yeah. knew. Yeah, man, sir. Because uh, I'm there, I do my thing and I listen to the conversation. I mean, never know say so big across the world. You know? Yeah. I never mean, know say so big. Right Close now. Close to a billion streams. At yeah, I think I'm over a billion streams. Right? Well, I'm going to find out. But I'm have, in my career so far, I have um, a kind of hit plaques in total. I'm on to my second one because we can about to be going to America any day now. So, but as far as UK four, um, Canada four, and as we stand right now, US one, but one more forward. So in total, I have like eight blocks. So yeah, mama, do good enough. So when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, you're just coming at the thing, which one of these big artists today mm -hmm. as El Lapio, who you really look up to? Well, be a role model. Well, mother said Usher, and then it happened that me and become cool. But Usher was the first person we really look up to that me become very close with. I like, give him some of the best advice that me can ever um, ask for. The first big artist that bring me up on stage, um, the first artist I had dinner with, like, where it made me know the game. Like, I'm not gonna lie, Usher was the first person who would give me some of the best advice. In the me think you really? call a, a, a Jamaican artist, you know? Jamaican, you know, um, yeah. to be honest, a Sirani first come, come a Jamaica, come tell me, say, yo. Yeah, Sirani. So are you saying? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Well, around the place. Mm. Big up Sirani for real, because Sirani was, um, right, this was 2012, 2011. Me, I lick with me, I hide, I got a party under here, I got a party them time. Yeah. And um, you have a regime, Tyson, who introduced me to Sirani, and we used to up and down from the road. So big up Sirani, most definitely. Um, and uh, Shaggy, I knew mm. Shaggy before my boss. Because I met Shaggy to rest in peace. Um, Prajid, I don't know if you know Prajid from Mob Deep. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I used to be around Prajid. So that's how me really, really? started. Yeah, man. So Prajid was. Then. Yeah, man. So Prajid <laughs> was. Queensbridge. Yes, man. So Prajid was my elder before me, Sirani. Was I was around. Mm -hmm. 
project. That's a before nobody now for know. We are before nobody for know. We are oh, talking, yes, yeah, yeah, man. We are me and the man my par like I par. So long you did the road. Yes, man. Me and the man my par. Me are talking about fourteen, fifteen. If mm. them war, we war. Whoever them beef, we beef with. Yeah, that, that, that's yeah, man. So yeah, project. Yeah. Yeah. But when we become cranium and like honestly, like the insight as a man who was so successful as Usher, I felt like my always said Usher because like. Certain information when you give me till this day, I would never had until um, I really sit down with the man and the man really like break it down to me like, brother, this is how it work and this is how it go. And I feel like that kind of give me the confidence that, all right, cool. I'm just going to build and do it that way. And yeah, man, so yeah. definitely Russia. For, for a man doing a show 25 years and have a show up every single week, mm -hmm. there must have been a time where I said, boy, Jano, but still, had to be on your A game, yeah. show up. Yeah, man, it, it's a long, it's too much to even start. Too much. I mean, the struggle of doing television in a market of our size. But it, I remember even one time I went to Europe and we had a camera. I was at CV at the time, one of my biggest, um, most dreadful moment were in Europe for the first time touring, me and Rupert Campbell and the camera. One camera mm -hmm. break down on us. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. The camera just went out, and we mm -hmm. were, not, were embedded with Lucian or the messenger. That time, Lucian, that time Lucia burn up the world, you know. Yeah. And we were embedded with them for like two two weeks, and the camera just went out. And we said, oh, Jesus Christ, we come up on this big tour and we can't care about nothing, nothing to capture. Mm -hmm. And them times, they're like, you can go buy one of the camera and thing. But Rupert find an uncle bridging and get an uncle camera. Yeah. <laughs> you know the other camera where you got yeah, some yeah, yeah, yeah. work. You have to work. Yeah, work. And we come work. back and, and we were able to do our stories. And, and people mind. know what, what that what that cost, you know. One thing we have to say and, and, and give major props for it the, the entertainment change and people in you know, them phone and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok mm -hmm. and all over, but you guys have always managed to pull people back to, to television. Mm -hmm. You know, eight o'clock on a Saturday, nine o'clock on a Saturday, with dead there with you, and th that speaks volumes for the content that you have and mm -hmm. the, the, the the consistency over the years. What's the process like? Quick before we go, how do you manage to stay on top of all of the trends? Cause you talk to all of them, you know, you give everybody a platform. The youngest little shot away around the place, mm -hmm. you have him on the show. How 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 you you stay on top of all of the trends and the new. People. Well, we have a team. Have a we team. have a team of people uh, who are out there. Uh, my son Jason included. Yeah. Um, myself. We we need to know what's breaking, who's breaking, who's new, mm -hmm. and what they're. And it's easier now than than in the past because you can go to social and see who's buzzing, who's okay. trending, who people are talking about a lot. Yeah. And we try to bring clarity to to Wagwan and also um, facts and truth because a lot of things you're seeing aren't true. People are creating stuff online. Mm -hmm. So it gives us now the, the opportunity to be, to be sincere, to be truthful, to bring the facts, the truth about the stories that you've been consuming right. and even pushing and sharing yeah. that, that are sometimes very false. Right, right. So we try to be credible. Credibility is our little strength. Because yeah. that's how we, were, we started. We started with truth mm -hmm. and we'll continue to do truth up against the creative, the, um, people creating stories and, yeah. and fabricating stories and putting out there about people and uh, then and there's a big market for it to consume what, what those things that are not well true. i mean no, now that i have my little sit down i have a whole new respect for what you do and and the work that is put in on the back end to make it look so good mm -hmm. gentlemen success to you guys on the journey um you you've done a lot so far and i, I know this i just it's that the, 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 the beginning of the thing you know what i'm saying and um i give thanks to you guys passing through it, we had some we, had, we talk about some things where but definitely i forgot watch by the episode and say right. yeah okay so enough respect for for coming through the cut
down to choice. Hey. I made use of my opportunity. Now I'm where I wanna be.